it is easy to conceptualize sampling from a finite population because we're able to create a sample frame. We know everyone who is in the population and we can randomly choose among them. But what about populations that are constantly changing? A population that if you measured it right now, it would be different. It would include different elements or different subjects tomorrow. Or maybe that population would be different in an hour. Sometimes the population could change by the minute. How do you sample a population that is constantly changing? That's what we're going to talk about with sampling an infinite population. An infinite population is uncountable. Not flipping a coin a thousand times, but all flips of all coins that have ever been flipped. The sampled population changes each time, such as hospital patients in the intensive care unit. The patients who are in today may or may not be in tomorrow. They're probably not going to be in next week, and certainly there will be other people who are now part of this population. Or the inventory in an Amazon warehouse. As you can imagine, that population is changing by the minute. Or customer support calls to a help desk. Those calls, the number of calls, the topic of those calls is continually changing day by day. How could we sample such an infinite population? We could begin by distinguishing between an infinite and a finite population. If a population is infinite, then there is no upper limit to the number of units in that population. Both the number of individuals in the population and the substance of that population are continually changing. Therefore, you cannot list all elements in the population. And even if you tried, that list would be different the next time you measured. Therefore, you cannot create a sample frame for the population because such a frame simply does not exist. However, we can still sample an infinite population and what we learn from our sample can still tell us something useful about our population. Let me be more specific about what I mean when I say that what we learn from the sample applies to the population. Let's start with point estimators. Point estimation uses statistics from the sample to estimate a population parameter. Remember that the mean of a sample is a statistic, but the mean of a population is a parameter. We can use the sample statistic to estimate the population parameter. Point estimation is a form of statistical inference, and the point estimators will have an analog with a population value. For instance, the mean of a sample is X bar, which is the point estimator for a population value of mu. The standard deviation of a sample is SD, or sometimes written simply as S. But that is a point estimator for the population value standard deviation called sigma. The proportion of a sample P bar is a point estimator for the population value, capital P. And sometimes point estimators are called parameter estimators. Here we have a population, but it's hidden away from us, wrapped up in a way that we can't know anything about it. All of the parameters are unknown. How could we learn something about this population? We could start by doing random samples. We select one sample and determine that the mean of that sample is 5.3. A second sample yields a mean of 4.8. A third sample gives us a mean of 5.1. What are we going to do with those numbers? Which one of them is the best point estimator for the population? And the answer is we shouldn't pick just one. What we should do is take each individual mean, average them, and the average of those means will be the best point estimator for the population. We use the means of the three samples to create our point estimator for the population mean. 
Well, I just said that we could take a sample from a population where the values of the population are unknown. How do we do that? And the answer is we're going to use the same types of random sampling techniques that we could use with a finite population. We will still use random sampling to get a representative sample from our infinite population, allowing us to make valid statistical inferences. To randomly sample an infinite population, each element must be from the target population, and each element must be selected independently. Let's use an example from a data set that I've acquired. This is real data, but has been completely de-identified, so that there's no way to know who or what it represents. In fact, I've even scrambled and changed a few numbers just to make sure it's completely de-identified. However, it's a very realistic data set that's going to tell us something about an infinite population. We will use this very large data set as our infinite population, and we'll determine how we can use random sampling to get a good sample from the population. And then we can measure how representative our sample is of the population because, having the entire data set, we can actually measure the true population parameters. That's going to give us a measure of our sampling error. For this example, you will pretend that you are a hospital administrator, and you want to collect data on patient admissions and their length of stay in an intensive care unit. We will use the RAND function in Excel to randomly select 30 cases from this entire data set. We will compute the mean and the standard deviation on the length of stay. And later, we will compute proportions of those who expired while they were in the ICU. And for that, we're going to turn to Microsoft Excel to sample this infinite population.